Hi there, this is Marty from OwingsArt.com. That's O-W-I-N-G-S-A-R-T.com. And today we're going to take a look at these Windsor & Newton inks. This is uh, an ink assortment uh, called the Henry Collection. It comes in this uh, plastic box, I guess you'd call it. Um, and it comes with an assortment of eight different colors of ink. Uh, emerald, orange, scarlet, blue, canary yellow, black Indian ink, nut brown, and violet. And what I'll do today is I'll try these inks out in two different ways. First I'll try them with a fountain pen, which is a very traditional way to uh, use things, use these inks. And a, a fountain pen just to the left there, a fountain pen, um, in the old days it might have been a feather and they just kind of shaved the end of the feather off and then that would create, it would suck the uh, ink up into the, um, the pen and you could use it and then you dip the quail into the ink well and you'd use it that way. Well over time they developed the pens. Uh, by the way these inks are all made in France which is um, cool but you over time they modified these pens to have pens to have steel nibs so um, you know they last longer they hold the ink a little bit better uh, things like that. One thing you have to remember about uh, Windsor & Newton ink is that there's a shellac in this ink. It's water soluble, so you can rinse it, wash it out with water um, uh, if it gets on your pens or your skin or whatever. Uh, but the thing with these is they have a shellac in them. So if you leave them on your brush or you leave them in your, in your uh, uh, pen, uh, pen, you're gonna they'll be sticky and it'll you got to get rid of that. So just wash your brush thoroughly and your pen when you're done uh, using the inks. So the first ink we're going to take a look at today is uh, this scarlet ink. And I'll just use uh, this fountain pen that I have here. Uh, yep, and we'll, I'll show you how, how to use a fountain pen as well. So you just take the fountain pen, yep, standard steel tip, dip it right into the ink, make sure you shake off any excess, and then just start writing. It's pretty simple and pretty easy actually. And you'll start to notice the pen will there'll be less ink in it and then you just have to dip it again right into the ink. So just gonna do a few letters and numbers here and uh, I tried, try to draw a little sphere. These, these pens, you know, lots of people drew with these pens and you know in the old days when you had a uh, a quill and an ink well, um, you know, probably people thought, well, writing will never advance beyond this. Why should it? So um, the ballpoint hadn't been invented yet, and this was the way um, people uh, drew and, and, and lettered and wrote letters and postcards and everything else. So you'll notice that there's some of these imperfections. If you look at really old documents or you're interested in history, you'll notice some of that stuff because this is the way people basically, you know, drew and, and wrote with, with these types of pens. So I'll try the orange out next. That The scarlet was good. It, was, it wasn't as red as I expected it to be because when you say scarlet it should be pretty red but um, this orange is cool and I'm just going to go ahead and letter that and I'll just try each one of these colors. Yeah, and just do some letters and numbers. Yeah, I'll uh, draw some lines here and you can see as the ink runs out, it just kind of runs out. Every once in a while it'll pick up a little paper because the tip of the um, the nib on this pen is very sharp. So if you scrub a little bit or you do a lot of line work like in this sphere I'm doing, you'll pick up a little paper on the end of the nib and just have to write, you know, scrape it off on the paper itself. I'm using the yellow here. I had it mixed in with a little other color there when I first started out, but you can see the yellow's pretty cool too. It kind of gives a transparency. You know, it'd be great to kind of ink little marbles with that if you get the reflections just right. So next thing I want to do is try out a brush. And uh, this is a very nice, uh, I believe, Spanish brush. And I'm going to use the uh, the nut brown here, yep, and see how uh, the ink works with the brush.
So you just take your brush. I've got some water off to the right there. You just take the brush, dip it right into the to the uh, ink, and you just start painting like you would normally. So you get in a little closer here. And when you're using a brush with the like some of these colors, it's a little different than you might be used to with a normal paint. I mean, there's it's ink. But there's not an extreme amount of coverage, you know, it's not super dark. You kind of put, you kind of have to apply it in layers, as I understand it. Um, you know, and I haven't used ink out of the jar extensively either, but I just think it's fun to try new things and give new things a try, uh, you know, see what, they can, what you can do with them. So I thought it'd be great to try these out. So you can see with a brush, you can kind of rework and you can add water, and that's what I did just there add a little water. Now I'm back to the uh, fountain pen here. Practice a little writing here with it as well. But my uh, calligraphy is not that good. I'm just kind of trying some old school writing or whatever. But it's fun to use and you can see the various effects you get. Now I'm going to just try each of the paints with the brush. Give you a sense of the color that goes down from these inks. Kind of cool, right? Yeah, I think Windsor & Newton makes great products, and these inks are really cool as well. I like using them, so it's not hard to recommend them. Um, yeah, I would definitely try these out if you get a chance, and try a fountain pen. It's kind of old school, but it's, it's cool. All right, this has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. Don't forget to leave a comment or question if you have one, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Hey, thanks for stopping by today. So long, everybody.